Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at you, and today another update video on Lost in Time. And basically today what I want to cover is some things I've been thinking about as far as plot and a bunch of debugging that I had to do this week uh, because I introduced a new plugin called Aura, which I'll dive into when I dive into the Unity section. But that kind of broke a lot of the scene code, and so I want to want to talk through that and what are kind of the changes that were made. So. For starters, want to quickly dive into our kind of timeline. We are pretty far behind. I want to say about two to three weeks at this point, but I think that'll be okay as long as you guys <laughs> want to keep watching. That'll that'll work out. But really, the the goal for this is to get it into a state we think is good for publishing, and then actually publish that on Steam and arcades, as we mentioned in our first video. So that's kind of going to be the goal going throughout, uh, throughout this project. And so we will have to shift the timeline back basically if we think that uh, we're not basically meeting whatever we think is appropriate for actually delivering. So we wanna make sure we deliver a pretty good and quality product as well as a just something that we feel confident and proud of publishing. So that's one of the reasons we're pushing it back. And hopefully kind of give you a sense that it's kind of hard to plan for all of the different things that go into development. So as much as we love to kind of push ourselves to hit a really tight deadline of one month, sometimes that's not always possible. So just wanted to mention that. And that's one of the reasons why I keep wanting to share this timeline doc with you guys, just so you guys know where we're at, why, what are the reasons we need to push things back and uh, hopefully adjust the deadlines as necessary. So yeah, that's basically where we're at, still kind of in level two, hoping to finish at least the prototype of that this week, and then moving on to level three. But I think I've, one of the reasons it took me a little while for level two is I wanted to figure out, one, the plot, which I'm gonna talk about just now, and then two was just kind of making it a little more interesting. So as far as plot goes, recently played budget cuts, or rather I'm about five hours into budget cuts, so we're almost towards the end, and what I realized was one, the difficulty curve I think was appropriate to not only increase gameplay but also uh, challenge players. So that's one of the things kind of, yes, this is a little bit of the earliest stages of the level. So I wanna make it introductory, but also still a little bit challenging, but finding that, that sweet spot might be a little bit difficult, but I really wanna to push towards making that possible. So that's kind of kind of one of the tweaks that I'm trying to make towards level two. And two is specifically plot itself. So things I've been thinking about recently, I've watched Stein's Gate, and that's basically an anime full of making use of time to basically bring out the character development of a lot of the, the characters in that story. And another thing that one of my favorite anime is Code Geass, and the consistent theme throughout that is moving towards the future. So those two things, kind of the science elements of time, as well as just this concept of moving time forward, are things I want to bring to this game. So that's basically what I'm trying to fix as I, I transition level two. Basically, that first level there, you get the time ring that activates time, at least in, in that first level. And the, the second level is about light. So basically that first present room is dark and you're basically allowing light to move into the, the second level. That's kind of the themes I wanna bring through. And obviously as you go through the levels, I might wanna introduce more characters to, to kind of bring that, but really watching those two things made me realize what we have right now, at least development wise, could kind of fit or maybe a combination of those two plot points. So I figured it might be worth a shot to maybe not introduce everything yet because what we're trying to do is this is like part one of more potential series, but that that kind of hinting at those core elements. So I'll, I'll try my best at trying to make that happen, but uh, <laughs> no guarantees, but I kind of like that approach of bringing in uh, just kind of a variety of different small plot points really to emphasize the fact that you are trying to, to fix your future because time is fundamentally broken. And hopefully through development, I can kind of make that actually happen. It might take some tweaks on the design document, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. So that's pretty much plot. And now I want to kind of talk about debugging because that took up a lot of my time besides playing budget cuts and watching Steins Gate. So let's go ahead and dive into that. 
So this is the second level, and I'll also pull up our our uh, first level. Okay. So this is still pitch black loom. Basically, what I've done here is this is going to be your final entry point out. It's basically you need to reflect light in such a way that it hits these three points, and you have three flashlights that you'll need to make ha make that happen. So for starters here. Uh, you'll see that you'll know that there's something you do because literally this whole room is pitch black and there isn't much I've I've stuck the red flashlight in the present world Originally I had plans to make all three flashlights stay in the past But I think having a little back and forth here between the past and present will help a little bit with kind of encouraging players to actually go back and forth and try things out. So there's one of the reasons I've kept it here. And I'm going to switch to the past just so you can see with the baked lighting, everything that's happening in here. But basically, there's a little space here for players to actually go in. And I've kind of put in these placeholder drones. If you remember, this is way back when, when we made our first kind of spy-esque VR game, kind of inspired by budget cuts, actually. So or at least the demo anyway. But wanted to kind of bring that drone back as a placeholder so you'll see i i have that here basically the idea is in the past you'll have these drones kind of navigating around kind of blocking blocking you and you can either sleuth through or you have your sword which is going to be conveniently placed in the middle of all these drones that you can use to slice and dice them and in the past we're going to have this isn't implemented yet but we're going to have basically kind of this is a little bit inspired by Harry Potter in like, I think it's the first movie where there's a bunch of like mini flies that come and attack him. So basically having that in, in the pitch blackness, so you'll have your flashlight, you'll be able to see around and find that. And they'll only start activating once you bring your flashlights in. And the idea is here, each time you go back, back and forth and bring kind of more flashlights through, there will be more of each in and so both more flies in the darkness and more drones in the past and so basically as you progress it becomes harder and harder to navigate through the space and another thing that uh we made was kind of this and i mentioned before with the red flashlight is i added in these kind of two layers basically so this is where the blue flashlight is the the top one's the red and this one here is the yellow but the idea here is just kind of separating this giant space because originally it was, in my opinion and Abdo's opinion as well, a little too big. So by condensing it, but fundamentally keeping it about the same size, but kind of navigating the player through a more kind of linear space, it hopefully should help keep the focus as opposed to having too much to explore right off the bat at level two. So that is something I hope might, might fix this. Obviously you, can, obviously you can tell this is just literally a cube that I tossed in here, but it gives you that kind of effect of there are full floors that you need to go through. And by going through different floors, you'll be able to navigate different spaces and inter interact with different enemies is, is the idea. The mirrors are still there. There's a slight bug with this basically where it is using the wrong uh, Steam VR camera want to fix that, that should hopefully be a pretty easy fix through the stereo renderer. And then basically having these mirrors be movable. So you're basically, the idea here is you're going to want to move your mirrors in the past or the present. You can you can choose either, set them up so that in the present you can flash the, the lights and basically hit those those three orbs that you see on the, uh, <laughs> at the end here. And you'll have the flies that are obviously going to be blocking your path. So you'll want to use the mirrors. You don't have to. Basically, the drones and the flies can knock your flashlights as they as they move their, in their space, especially if they find you and then try to shoot at you. So you'll want to use kind of these safe zones, which is specifically these areas. And maybe I'm going to also make the bottom floor here a little bit of a safe area. Bounce them off your, your mirrors and make that work. Now, I talked about the scenes. So one of the big things I added in here was the one-time manager. Basically, it keeps track of whether or not you've visited a scene uh, at least once. So if I go ahead and open that up. All right, one opened up. Basically here, it's basically a dictionary. That's all I'm using here, keeping track of the level name and whether or not we've visited it. And if we have visited it, we want to throw off this event, basically saying whether or not we've visited it or not. 
This is super useful for this one time script, which I have open, which basically says if we visited it, then go ahead and destroy our one time object and any of the children. So these are specifically things like the flashlight, the sword, anything that we're bringing across levels and we don't want them destroyed, but we want them to have them basically there once. We can use a one time to listen to the one time manager, which will then tell us whether or not we visited a place once. If so, keep all the objects and make sure they don't destroy. And if we haven't, or if we have visited it more than once, then go ahead and destroy everything because we don't need that. So that's basically the idea here. And it actually keeps, saves you from a lot of different things. So for example, in the first level, so on, on this door, we basically have on our time door lock, it's now listening to the one time manager. And if it is the first time, great, we're going to keep it open so that you can go through and get yourself locked. If it's not your first time, we're going to keep it closed because we've already closed it before because otherwise you, you wouldn't have had the time ring to, to go through. So it's a small change like that that basically saved me from keeping, I originally had three scenes in the first level. Now I could have reduced that to two because small changes can, can now be tracked by the one time manager. So that was a nice little trick that I added to, to save me from having multiple scenes for different states of the game. Now I really only need two and this can be kind of tweaked in a way that really helps that out. The other thing that kind of <laughs> was a lot tricky for me to do was talking about the flashlights from level two was the aura the Aura plugin is I guess what it's called. It's basically for these flashlights but on this flashlight here we have an aura light. This is what allows us, so typically when you use lights in Unity, it's only gonna project the light onto physical walls, not into 3D space. Uh, but traditionally kind of in real time lights, what you want is there's pretty much dust particles in the scene. So if you imagine like a haunted house, you'll have a bunch of dust. And when you use your flashlight, you actually see the beam go across the room because it's hitting a bunch of these particles along the way. What Aura is enabling us to do is basically emulate that by assuming that there's a dust and we can set how much dust there is in the space. And by having an Aura light, it'll then project that as a post-processing filter, which is really, really neat. And basically sh shine that light so that you basically can see it going from your flashlight all the way out into, until it hits a wall or until you tell it to stop. So I think it's a really, really cool effect and really kind of turns something like this, this flashlight, which would have to have a much longer range to actually hit any of the walls in such a big space to having a pretty short range, which I like, and instead being able to see anything that goes in between you and that flashlight. It's a really, really nice effect. And it's an open source plugin, which is even more awesome and I really enjoy. The problem is what ends up, ends up happening, which messed up me a little bit, is you need to have an Aura script on here. But the problem is you need to have, at the time of a scene loading, you need to have exactly one Aura camera set up. So what I had to do was basically, it's a little bit hacky, but ended up basically disabling the Aura script until I remove both cameras. And the reason I'm trying to keep cameras per scene is because as a result, I can quickly go ahead and pick a scene and just test it out, make sure everything works. If I didn't do that, basically I'd have to play through the whole game to get to the point where that camera is, is actually there in the scene and then test it and see if it works or not. So those are just kind of the, the high level things. Aura caused me a little bit of trouble, but now that it's all set, it's working great. And now, we, now that the debugging is done, can finally focus on the game design of these actual two levels, which I'm really looking forward to. And then moving on to level three. And in the meantime, Abdo is working on our art assets for the first level. So making that look a little more spoofy and really more polished as opposed to what's already there right now, which is a mismatch of a bunch of different proportioned rooms that are kind of jambled together. So hopefully, not hopefully, I know Abdo will actually make a really, really awesome looking first level and then moving, moving from there. So keep continually, as I continue to prototype, he's catching up uh, on the art side. And once that's all done together, everything gets integrated. It takes a little more time than necessary, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, but I, I think the end result is going to be super awesome. And I can't wait to share that with you once we get this into a really good state. 
But yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. And again, leave comments below about anything that even if you're just saying hi, that means a lot. So thanks so much for watching. And until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.